and today I want to explain the factors that cause inflation. Inflation is a sustained rise in the price level and prices can rise for two main reasons. Uh, rising demand, the economy is growing too quickly and or rising costs, uh, supply side shocks like rising oil prices. So when the economy is overheating, when the economy is growing very quickly, then this tends to push up prices because firms can't keep up with demand, so they simply put up prices. Uh, it's a natural reaction to uh, uh, shortages putting up prices. So when you look at um, economies which are growing very rapidly, like for example the UK in the late 1980s, then you see this uh, rise in inflation, and we call that demand pull inflation. And this can be caused by a variety of factors such as very low interest rates, uh, booming house prices which encourages people to spend, it could be rising wages, very high confidence, uh, all these factors feeding through into consumer spending rising and uh, if firms can't keep up then prices rise. The other main type of inflation is when there's an increase in the cost of production, when firms pass on these cost increases to consumers in the form of high prices. And a good example is a rise in the price of oil. So oil is a very important commodity. Uh, many goods, or well, nearly all goods, are transported uh, using some form of oil-based energy. So when oil goes up, uh, it's more expensive to transport goods, so uh, prices rise. And as well as rising oil prices, it could be supply-side shocks. So for example, here in 2021, we have a supply uh, crunch because of the shortage of shipping containers and shortage of quite a few uh, raw materials and this is pushing up prices and costs of uh, producing things. Also it could be a uh, rise in taxes which cause a one-off price increase or it could be if a country devalues the exchange rate. So if the exchange rate falls significantly then this has a couple of effects on inflation. Firstly when the exchange rate falls imports will be more expensive so that you get a direct increase in imported inflation and this is a type of cost push inflation. So when the UK left, uh, when the UK had the Brexit vote in 2016, the pound fell about 10-12% and import prices rose reasonably significantly causing a little bump in inflation. Also when you get a depreciation in exchange rate it helps to boost domestic demand because now your exports are more competitive causing a rise in uh, demand and this could cause some demand pull inflation. There's also a third factor that when you have a, a fall in the exchange rate it is argued that it can make uh, firms more inefficient because they become more competitive without trying. Exports are cheaper because of exchange rate and so therefore um, they get easy uh, gains and this could make them more inefficient, less willing to cut costs so in the long term it could cause to creeping inflation. Now an important factor in inflation is people's expectations. So if people expect low inflation then it's much easier for inflation to remain low because workers won't be demanding large wage increases, firms won't be uh, trying to push up prices. So if you get a one-off temporary rise in oil prices but inflation expectations stay low, then this inflation may well prove to be temporary. A good example of this is in 2008. Oil prices went up quite dramatically, causing a spike in inflation around the world, but it didn't last. Inflation expectations weren't there, and of course the, uh, there was a big recession, which tends to reduce inflationary pressures because of lower demand. So expectations are important. And if we look at, say, the 1970s, there we have an oil price shock quite significant, 1973-74, uh, oil prices really rise very rapidly. And at that time, uh, the world economy is much more dependent on oil. And this rise in oil prices led to a sustained period of inflation because it really changed inflation expectations. Um, workers were a little bit more powerful, more trade unions. And so with rising oil prices and powerful trade unions, workers were able to bargain for significantly higher wages. And this higher wages led to a wage price spiral. As firms increase wages, their costs go up, so they put up prices. But also, if workers are getting more money, uh, higher wages, 
then their nominal spending powers increased, so you get rising demand. So in the 1970s, we had a situation of uh, inflation, but it's quite hard to get under control because expectations were rising and wages were rising quite rapidly in response to it. So if you look at, say, um, 2008, when oil prices rose very rapidly, wages weren't increasing, and so the inflation was very temporary. So a good question to ask in 2021 is, will the inflation that we're seeing prove to be temporary or permanent? Because on the one hand, you could say that uh, these temporary price rises may lead to a more permanent inflation because it may change expectations and it also may lead to rising wages as workers uh, try to meet their living costs. However, others might say, well, although prices are rising now, it may not last into 2022 because workers don't have the capacity to push up wages. Inflation expectations are still low after many years of low inflation. And so um, prices will kind of uh, stop rising uh, next year. But you know it's not so easy to predict because in the past uh, 10, 20 years, inflation has been very low. But with COVID and supply side shocks and um, all kinds of environmental uh, issues causing a shortage of some materials, then inflation is more likely than it has been for a while. Other factors that could uh, affect inflation is the money supply. So the typical monetarist analysis is that uh, inflation is very much uh, caused by excess growth in the money supply. If you print a lot of money, um, there's more money circulating, but if good, the level, volume of goods is the same, then it simply uh, causes inflation, firms put up prices. So in a way, it's a form of uh, demand pull inflation because the money supply is causing more demand, but the supply isn't there. Now, although this was big in the uh, early 1980s and late 70s, um, it's not without its drawbacks because often the link between the money supply and inflation is much weaker than you might expect from economic theory. So for example, after the 2008 uh, crisis, uh, central banks around the world increased the monetary base. They basically increased the money supply. But it didn't cause any inflation because the money was created, but banks and uh, individuals just didn't want to use it. So you had this big increase in the monetary base, but it didn't cause a boom in spending or investment. It just basically uh, sat in bank accounts. And so it had really no effect on inflation at all. So we have to be careful um, that an increase in the money supply definitely can cause inflation, but it doesn't always. And the past 10 or 20 years have been unusual in that we've had a, what called a liquidity trap and the higher money supply hasn't translated into inflation. So just to recap, um, you know, the main factor affecting inflation is when uh, economic growth is too quick, when it's above the long run trend rate, when firms can't keep up with uh, rising demand and so they respond by rising prices. And the other big cause of inflation is that cost push inflation, rising oil prices, rising wages, rising price of raw materials, which leads to increases in inflation. And also it depends on other factors about whether this temporary inflation becomes permanent, whether it increases or whether it falls. So we've got expectations of inflation. And also you have the response of central banks. So supposing we had demand pull inflation, then the central bank may increase interest rates and higher interest rates tend to slow down uh, economic growth and slow down inflationary pressures. So that's one way to uh, affect inflation, what's happening to interest rates and uh, fiscal policy.